Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my repair series, and today we're gonna to be talking about improving and fixing the NES Advantage. The NES Advantage was released in 1987 alongside the Nintendo Entertainment System. Well, at least in North America. It's actually a very nice arcade style controller for the Nintendo with a fairly tall joystick with a ball top. Um, although it's not clicky switches, it is membranes and two large buttons with turbo and a slow feature. Although the slow feature is mainly just a rapid fire on uh, the start button. <clears throat> I absolutely love the NES Advantage, and I, I think it's actually a very good controller if you maintain it properly. Uh, there are some issues with it that happen just due to age, not due to quality or anything like that. It's actually the first controller that my granddaughter used when she was four years old to play Kirby, and therefore it really does hold a special place in my heart. So with all of that said, Here's the video of me showing you exactly some of the things I've done to maintain the longevity of the NES Advantage. All right, today we are actually going to be working on a NES Advantage. Um, I'm gonna go over some of the tools that I have with me first. I have uh, this spudger and this prior right here that I'm gonna be using to actually like point and stuff um, at various things. I have a toothbrush with some denatured alcohol and some cotton swabs. I have the cable tied up. This screwdriver currently has a P2 Phillips head in it. Uh, if I change that out, I will let you know. And this is a 10 millimeter deep socket. And I will get into why I have that uh, in just a little bit. Now I've already done some repairs to this one and uh, it's working out very, very well. I'm very happy with the way that it's turned out, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one apart again and just show you guys exactly what I've done to this to make it definitely work a lot better. Um, a lot of these have aged fairly well. You can even tell this one's even starting to yellow a little bit, and I need to go through and uh, let this one take another turn in my UV box. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and flip this guy over. And you can take like a, a normal uh, flathead screwdriver and do this, but I'm just going to use my spudger. Get that off. Yeah, that's a little on the sticky side. Uh, a little gross. But you got to do it because there are screws underneath here. And you can always use something to like re-glue it down like just like yeah, not super glue but just something okay get these screws out all of the screws on the back. I'm going to flip this one over and do one more thing before I take the back plate off. So I'm going to get a good pinch on those and take those knobs off. And that's where this uh, deep socket comes into play. And you just gently do it. Don't, don't sit there and ratchet on it really hard because you'll break everything. Okay. 
think, yeah, that one's that one's loose. That one should be loose. Okay, flip these over, shake out the all of that stuff, and the way that these go back in order is there's the ring first, the, or the washer, and then the nut goes on top. Set those there, and there comes off the bottom plate. I'll just take that over here and set it down. So, uh, as long as you don't see anything like Coca Cola or anything like that in these, because you got to remember, kids own this stuff. Um, you should be okay for the most part. Uh, now, one of the major things that I do that not a lot of other people do is I actually take off the controller directional pad. And yeah, it's kind of a directional pad. I know it looks like a joystick, but you'll see what I mean in a moment um, where it's just four buttons up, up, down, left, and right. And the last screw. Now, definitely hold this down a little bit because there's a spring underneath there that's pressing. And oh, you just don't want to go tracking down springs that might launch everywhere. Okay, so here it's already different because I've taken white lithium grease and squirted it in here and on here because all of the lubrication that was originally factory is gone by now. Um, if there was there, if there was any there in the first place. Um, now, if you see like light gray dust anywhere on all of this stuff, uh, definitely take your denatured alcohol and your Q-tips and a paper towel. Just get all of that out there. What that is is atomized or powdered plastic from plastic grinding against plastic. We don't want that. We want this to feel nice and smooth. And then the way that you put this back is you... Sorry about that. Camera cut out on me. So the way you put this back is you line it up and then you kind of grab from the back and just pull down and you make sure that these four gray sections are through the holes right here. And you take this, put it over the top, and then you can release on the other side as long as it's secured. And then it should just kind of snap into place. And I like to keep one of my thumbs down on it and then just get one screw and get it lined up. And then go backwards until I hear that click. So I'm not cutting new threads. And I secure one down and then I secure the opposite side down too. And I've still got my thumb pressed on it. I'm still pinching this whole setup. Then backwards for a little bit, and there we go. And now that I have two corners secured, I can let my thumb off of it and relax a little bit. And get this one back in. And my final one. Now, since the camera cut, you did not get to see me take out the black screws on the green board, but that's not a big deal. Uh, there's one here, 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 there's one here, and there's this leg that goes right there that basically grounds the entire unit to the metal base plate. But the reason I took out those two, two 10 millimeter uh, uh, nuts is so that I could flip this guy like this. Now here I usually just clean these pads right here with denatured alcohol when they need them. Uh, I check for any corrosion, I check for any breaks. Um, I'm not really seeing any anything wrong. Um, I'm not seeing any kind of like residue or anything like that. So it looks like we're fine on the board.
Now on the buttons, you want to take each one of them out and you want to clean thoroughly around each button. Um, you're basically not just cleaning this, but you're trying to polish this back to a smooth surface. Now, these tabs are important on either side. Let me get the pointer and point them out. These, these guys right here are important because they line up with grooves that are right here. And yes, that can happen. You can accidentally get the rubber membrane and like pop it off and have it go flying. So be careful of that as well. Also, make sure that your rubber membranes are not do not have like any trash or anything in them and that they look black. But I always go through and I just clean all of the buttons and then I clean around the outsides of where the buttons slot into because we just don't want any debris, we don't want anything interfering with that motion so that you can continue to press the buttons. I don't use any lubrication here, although I could possibly use um, Teflon tape or something like that um, just to with a sticky side on one side or something along the lines to just kind of guide that. But that's basically it. After that you just kind of just make sure everything's sitting back pretty and then flip this back over and then you put all the screws back in and you put the cable back where it goes and you and then you put the lid back on and everything goes back in together you, and remember on this top side it is washers first and then the two 10 millimeter uh, nuts that go on top and then after that the the gray things go on and I usually line up the buttons to go all the way down first by twisting the knob all the way to the left that way I can line it up perfectly and everything looks and feels just as good as when it was brand new and possibly even better but I'm gonna leave it here guys uh, you guys know what to do definitely put your white lithium grease in in the ball and socket joint here and check for any kind of grime or anything like that here clean out everything thoroughly make sure you have your denatured alcohol your toothbrush um, you know some cotton swabs uh, your 10 millimeter socket deep socket uh, your P2 uh, Phillips screwdriver and you should be good everything on this NES Advantage is very easy to service well that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs I'm your host Mondane and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them with you as always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.